Welcome to the Missionary Mobilization Podcast, a resource for Christian leaders who want to increase the number of missionaries around the world. This podcast is a ministry of the Center for Missionary Mobilization and Retention at Trinity Bible College in Graduate School. Visit us online at missionarymobilization.org. Now, here's your host, the founder and director of the Center for Missionary Mobilization and Retention, David Jacob. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Missionary Mobilization Podcast. Our goal is to equip and encourage mobilizers and missions pastors around the world. Please don't forget to listen to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. And if you would give us a five-star rating and a review on Apple Podcasts, that would help us to reach more listeners. And speaking of reaching more listeners, we'd love it if you would share this podcast with a friend and let us know how you like the show or if you've got any suggestions for future show topics. Just email us at hello at missionarymobilization.org. Well, did you know that the Center for Missionary Mobilization and Retention also publishes the Missionary Mobilization Journal? Published semi-annually, the Missionary Mobilization Journal produces practical and theoretical articles related to missions mobilization within the context of the missionary, the church, the agency, and the academy to equip and educate these stakeholders in the ministry of missionary mobilization. This journal is available free of charge in digital format and now available in print All you need to do is go to missionarymobilization.org, click on journal. Our topic today is your part in God's story, and our guest is Steve Addison. Steve is a catalyst for movements that multiply disciples and churches everywhere. He's an author, speaker, podcaster, and mentor to movement pioneers. Steve is married to Michelle, and they have four adult children and two and a half grandchildren. I'm assuming that means one is on the way, Steve. Congratulations. Well, his latest book, Your Part in God's Story, 40 Days from Genesis to Revelation, was just released last month. So, Steve, welcome to the program today. Good to be with you. Well, let's talk for a little bit about why you decided or why God led you to write this book. Well, I was struck by um, the account in Luke of when Jesus rises from the dead, he encounters a group of disciples who have been scattered. They've failed him. Even one has denied him. And, uh, you know, if we think about missionary retention, um, he was having a hard go of it. Um, and mm. <laughs> Luke tells us he's, he's got just 40 days to restore them and to prepare them for a worldwide mission. And I thought, oh, my goodness, you know, if, if this is what the risen Lord does for these 12, uh, surely he could do the same for us today. And um, so I looked at, well, how do you use this time uh, with his disciples? And the big surprise is, and we often miss it, is... He started in Genesis and took them all the way through what we now call the Old Testament uh, to Malachi, explaining and expounding the scriptures, helping them to, to understand how the Messiah had to come and suffer and die, then rise again, and how this message of um, you know forgiveness through the cross um, was going to go to the ends of the earth. So he takes them through the scriptures. He gives them the core missionary task, you know, go and make disciples of the nations. And then finally, he promises them the power of the Holy Spirit. So those are the three preparations uh, as we, as God's people, seek to serve his mission in the world. Um, The foundation in the scriptures, not just a, a Bible study, This is the risen Lord Jesus, you know, present with us through his word and the Holy Spirit, taking us through the scriptures to show us uh, God's purposes and our part in it, um, clear about the task, the promise of the Spirit. And I thought, oh my, you know, it's all there just in that 
those few verses in Luke, and then uh, he tells that story again in Acts. And I thought, wow. So I went on the journey over a number of years, doing quite a lot of study in the scriptures to, to try and understand. And then I thought, well, why don't I help others go through that same journey, just like Jesus did for the disciples, just in 40 days? You know, let's let's begin in Genesis, but we'll go all the way through to the book of Revelation and Ask those questions, you know, what's, what is God's story and what's my part in it? I love that. And I love that God spoke to you about this project through the word. And uh, that's just, it's, it's so important that we are immersing ourselves in the word of God and uh, that he does speak to us about initiatives. He speaks to us about things and, and different projects and ministry through the Bible. So it's mm -hmm. incredible. Uh, what's the format of the book? Can you talk to us about that? Because this is a great tool for, for mobilizers and pastors. So talk to us a little bit about the format of it. Well, I, I pitched it at um, that somebody can commit to those 40 days, and it, it may not be 40 consecutive days. They could, they could go, um, you know, five days a week, and then it's eight weeks. Um, and they read a passage from Scripture, so we drop in on 40 decisive moments in, in God's unraveling story in Scripture. They read that passage. Uh, I've written, uh, you know, uh, some reflections on that passage to help them see how it fits in with the whole flow, um, give them a bit of an idea of what to look for. But then we ask discovery questions. You know, what, what, are, what are you learning about, um, about who God is and what his purposes are? Uh, what are you learning about how he shapes the people that he calls uh, mm -hmm. What's God saying to you about your part in his story? And then finally, you know, what? how are you going to think and act differently? So each day you get into a rhythm of about 30 minutes. You could spend longer if you want, um, but about 30 minutes. And it's the cumulative effect, you know, as I'm, I'm up to day uh, 27. You know, even though I've written the studies, I haven't done them, if you get what I mean, as, <laughs> as an act of reflection before God in his presence. It's that cumulative effect um, mm. of not just knowing, but being in the presence of God and his word coming alive and speaking to you. And you can do that whole uh, 40 days uh, individually, but you can also do a group uh, we call it the 40 day challenge. So a group challenge where once a week, um, as you're going through individually, you're gathering to do one of the studies, to report in, um, to pray together, and then you go again. Um, so that's the format. Great. Well, I'm intrigued by um, how you use the grand narrative of scripture from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, why did you feel it was important to do that versus focusing only on, say, the New Testament, for example? Mm. Yeah. Well, um, one of the best reasons is that's what Jesus did. You know, uh, he's a risen Lord. I would have just said, just speak, Jesus. You know, and he says, mm. you know, get out the scriptures. Um, let's go a journey. So that's where the foundation and, and what you discover is Jesus doesn't overturn the Old Testament. He fulfills it. You know, not a single yeah. word of this is wasted or lacking in authority. But the Old Testament is is fulfilled and surpassed in Christ. And the exciting thing is to begin to see him, to see him even in Genesis 3 or to see him in, in the call of Abraham or the rescue of yeah. Israel, to see him in the prophets, you know, to see him in David's kingship and realize, hey, hey, it's, it's at times in the Old Testament, it's disappointing. You know, David, you let the, you let the Lord down. But Jesus is coming to fulfill all the hopes of the Old Testament. So we, we do about 12 studies and then the rest are in uh, the New Testament. Mm -hmm. 
I love being able to share and to teach here at Trinity Bible College in graduate school uh, about the grand narrative of Scripture and that mission starts in Genesis one twenty eight. that from mm-hmm. the very beginning, he's commanded us to scatter and fill the earth, to multiply mm-hmm. and to fill the earth, right? And uh, when the lights come on in, in students that there's... Yeah. You mean there's more to missions in the Bible than just the Great Commission at the end of Matthew, you know? And to be able to point through uh, from Genesis through the Old Testament and how that flows and and enhances, endorses the New Testament is Mm -hmm. uh, just an incredible study. And then, you know, I think as students think about, wait a minute, if the whole Bible is about missions, then like you're asking, what's what's my role here? It's not just a few mm. of the verses, right? It's yeah. the entire book. And so mm. how does that influence what I do with my life? So could you uh, give us some examples of some of the mm. studies that you've written here? Sure. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of, uh, I'm thinking of Jonah and, uh, you know, the great encouragement in Jonah is here's a man who, who gets the word of the Lord, you know, go to Nineveh, mm-hmm. and he turns away and runs in the other direction. He heads for, I think it's the coast of Spain, was Tarshish. And that's as far as, as, a, as, as, as someone, one of the ancients could imagine going. You know, it's the end of the earth after that. And... And the way in which God works with him. You know, a lot of people criticize Jonah for running. Um, they even say, well, he's a racist. He didn't like those Assyrians. Well, those, those Assyrians were murderous, cruel, right. evil people. You know, right. when they conquered you, they tortured to death men, women, and children. Um, so, mm. you know, he's thinking, I'm not going there. <laughs> and God <laughs> pursues him. You know, this is God's missionary. And I, I take comfort for that, that when I wander, when I lose it, when I just think, Lord, this is, you know, he comes looking for me. <laughs> and, mm. you know, that, that and, and even at the end of the book, you know, the, 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 the pagan sailors, they're, they're, they're Jonah's first converts and they're totally unintentional, but that's what right. God does. Um, yeah. But even at the end of the book, you know, Jonah's still outside of Nineveh looking on, just hoping God might destroy them, you know, really yeah, he's cheering still mad. God. He's just taken off, right? <laughs> yeah, and God is still with his missionary mm-hmm. saying, hey, this, this is a, a city of 120,000 people, and hey, let's not forget the cattle. <laughs> Should I not care for such a great city? Wow. And, and that's yeah. where the book of Jonah ends with that question, you know, and, and, mm. and, and, and God working uh, with Jonah. And I, I as, as same in Luke 24, when Jesus pulling these disciples back together, they're not superheroes. Mm-hmm. But the, and this is God's story. He's drawing us to play our part. So you might think, well, we're not significant. Well, he makes us significant. And Jonah was significant. Yeah. Nineveh turned to believe. Yeah. Absolutely. And if you ever need uh, endorsement of a successful short term mission trip, mm. all you need to do is turn to the book of Jonah and uh, mm. look at what God did through, a, you know, partially unwilling uh, participant there. So it's a it's a great mission study in Jonah. So, mm. Steve, talk to us a little bit about the the main audience for the book? Mm. Is this uh, something for youth? Is this for more for adults? Or mm. is there another segment of society that uh, you've kind of, mm. who's your main target here? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm thinking of, uh, you know, a 16 year old in high school and has a heart for the Lord and wants to serve him, you know, and they want to explore, well, what does it mean to, you know, serve mm. God in the world? What's his purpose? What's my part? You know, I'm I'm thinking I've got a, a, a brother who a brother in the Lord who uh, has a, a ministry into prisons in Texas, and there are hundreds of prisoners turning and believing and meeting in discipleship groups that function as churches. They can't call them churches, and I'm thinking of the guys <laughs> in that prison. Some of them in maximum security have turned and believed in the Lord Jesus. Wow. Uh, I want them to discover God's plan and purpose. I'm 
thinking of another couple who who are um, in the Middle East right now, uh, giving their lives to be in a dangerous place. And so they're seasoned practitioners, but the, the richness that comes when we, even as a seasoned practitioner or a seasoned Bible teacher, we sit down with the Word and, and just open it and go that journey. Uh, I'm thinking of a couple in London who, you know, in, involved in uh, um, working with uh, professionals in Apple and Facebook and Microsoft, and they're seeing multiplying movements of disciples, not just in London, but it's jumping to other major cities. So mm. it's people, whether it's someone in high school or just someone who wants to reach their neighborhood or someone who's been on the field in 10 years. You know, every, every author wants, wants it to be a big audience, but it's especially those who have a heart to serve the Lord. And and want to serve him on the foundations of, of his call in his living word. Yeah, the book is called Your Part in His Story and uh, Your Part in God's Story, rather. And um, it's uh, such an incredible tool that you as a mobilizer, as a missionary, um, uh, as a pastor can, uh, can use as you're discipling, as you are mentoring others. So let's get a little bit more practical, if we could, Steve. How can mm. mobilizers and pastors and other Christian leaders who are listening in today, how can they use this in a group setting with those mm. that they are currently mentoring and discipling? Well, um, the way I'd suggest is is go go visit the the website and find out some more at movements.net, and that'll explain how you can do the forty day challenge. You can draw others into a forty day challenge where they're reading a chapter at a time and the scriptures and reflecting. But then that can become a group challenge where um, once a week. During that uh, period of 40 days, you come together as a group, as, as I mentioned, and you, you debrief how it's going. You do one of the studies together and, and then you pray for each other and go again. The benefit of that, that group uh, experience uh, is not only the added learning, but now you've got those relational ties growing. Mm. And towards the further you get into the challenge, you can begin to say, you know, what's next? Because, you know, this is giving you the foundation. Well, how do we now get trained and equipped? Where do we start? Um, and uh, if people sign up for the 40-day challenge, they'll get an email every day from me just encouraging them, but increasingly just saying, well, have you thought about doing some training around these areas? Or have you thought, are you thinking about what's next? So it can be part of, a, I guess we, we'd call it a Great Commission pipeline, where you're just starting as many people as possible, wrestling with God's story and their part in it, helping mm -hmm. them take that next step and lay that foundation. And then beyond that, You've, you're going to plug in, well, hey, we've, we've got this training opportunity, we've got this conference coming up, we've got this short-term missions trip coming up. Um, the sort of thing you could do, even do the 40-day challenge as you prepare for the and go on the missions trip. That would be a, mm -hmm. a great experience. For sure. And we will definitely link to uh, these resources that Steve has mentioned in our show notes. If you go to missionarymobilization.org slash podcast, you can get all these show notes and links there. And uh, what a great tool as especially young people. Many of them asking, what's God's will for my life? And I know I went through a time where I felt the Lord transitioning me into a different ministry. And, and uh, I was asking, what's God's will for my life? Almost to a fault. In, in, uh, for example, I would, I would concentrate and almost obsess over God's will instead of concentrating and obsessing over God himself. And that's what I love about the book is that it really does uh, press you in to get to know God. And so it's a, it's a great, great tool that uh, can be used in groups or individuals as well. Uh, so as you are writing this book, Steve, how, mm. did, how did this process change you as a believer? 
Well, I, I think in two ways. One, one is I, I can tend to be a bit of a glass half empty person. And <laughs> um, I, I just got a glimpse of the greatness of God. In, and this is the amazing thing. It's in the mundane. You know, you read some stories like Abraham. It's years of waiting and, 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 and strife yeah. in the family and all sorts of mistakes he makes. It's just this, uh, you know, he's, he's just like a Bedouin uh, sheik sort of moving around. And yet this is part of a cosmic plan of God. Um, and, and so to realize, okay, at times our lives feel ordinary, but they're not because we have a part to play in this incredible story. And then I think the other thing was, you know, getting to the, we did three studies in the book of Revelation, getting to the end and realizing the grandeur, the greatness of God revealed in the lamb that was slain. You know, Mm. power, glory, majesty, but also trustworthiness, character, righteousness. And and this is where everything's going. Um, You know, God does not like power to save. And amazingly, he calls us in into this great story. We're a part of it as mundane at times that our lives feel they're not, you know. And so it's just just given me a lift to, to mm. do that and to be a bit more content when, when God doesn't seem to have the same schedule as me. He's not sort of <laughs> doing the things I want him to do. Yeah. And then all yeah, of a that's... sudden he brings, he brings it together, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the beauty of the gospel and the beauty of this uh, the study, this book that you have written, that everyone has a part to play, that missions is not just for missionaries, but Mm. everyone's got a really important role to play in the Great Commission endeavor. And it's going to take 100% participation to reach 100% of the world. And so Mm. uh, what a great tool to help help people understand that, um, that they do have a role to play in this great commission endeavor. You may not be the one who goes, uh, but you can certainly send, you can certainly educate, you can certainly mobilize, you can welcome the foreigner. Uh, Mm. God's will for your life, for everyone's life, every believer here is uh, to have some sort of important role in the great commission. And so this book is about helping you and helping those that you're mobilizing, those that you're recruiting, those that you're mentoring, helping them discover that their role in God's grand story. And, uh, you know, isn't it amazing, Steve, that he uses people like us? God takes a yeah. big risk, really, mm-hmm. to use us uh, as us, us human, feeble, weak sinners to uh, to play this, to play a part in seeing uh, everyone come to faith, every people group come to the throne of Jesus that we know Mm. finally in Revelation, Jesus gets the worship he finally deserves. And so it's a wonderful thing, a humbling thing to be uh, to be a part of that. So, Mm. Steve, if our listeners would like to know more or if they'd like to get in touch with you, how can they go about that? Well, best place is uh, movements.net. And they can get in touch with me there and also learn more about the book and the 40-day challenge. Look for those links to the 40-day challenge. They can download, if they sign up for the challenge, they don't have to have bought the book. They can download a complimentary introduction and first the first study. There's a webinar there to show them how to use it. Then they can decide, okay, I'll go and, I'll go and purchase the book. So that's all at movements.net. Great. We'll be sure to link to that in our show notes as well, missionarymobilization.org slash podcast. And if you'd like to learn more about missions mobilization, I want to introduce you to Trinity Graduate School's Master of Arts Intercultural Studies with a concentration, an optional concentration in missions mobilization. In fact, just today I was with some of our students who are studying things like mobilizing the Hispanic church 
and what we can do to mobilize those from Bulgaria to go to the nation. So this degree is specifically designed for missionaries, missions pastors, and agency mobilizers. And in fact, we are offering one free grad class for audit for any missionary. So if you're listening to this now, please get in touch with us. Hello at missionarymobilization.org, or you can visit our ministry partners website, trinitybiblecollege.edu for more information. Well, Steve, really fascinating, a great tool. Again, the text is called Your Part in God's Story. Please pick it up today. Steve, it was great having you on the show. Thanks so much for being with us Thank today. You. I've enjoyed it very much. Thank you, Dave. I have as well. A great conversation. And until next time, everyone, let's keep praying very intentionally. Let's keep praying hard for more laborers to work in his harvest fields. You've been listening to the Missionary Mobilization Podcast, a ministry of the Center for Missionary Mobilization and Retention at Trinity Bible College and Graduate School. You can access free resources online at missionarymobilization.org. Also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Missionary Mobilization. Thanks for listening.